whilst we know God from the perfect 14, 13 of them had known Him from this Queen. The proofs of God on mankind, God's proof in her they would find. 13 of them had known Him from this Queen. All 14 of God's greatest, perfect, impeccable household have all seen the oneness of God and of, the, and of this God we were told. But 13 of these 14 whose knowledge in God is untold know a queen for whom created was every heaven and world. For man, their proof of their creator. From them his proof is Fatima to Zahra. Of her there is no kind. God's proof in her they would find. Thirteen of them had known him from this queen. The fires that lit her house when Zahra would deny tyrants inspires future tragedies of which Fatima laments. Empires see threats in her children and their godly intents. She tires seeing poisoned men, crushed bodies and burning tents. How much she saw in the push of a door. No wonder for her wonders were made for. How much she saw in the push of a door. No wonder for her wonders were made for. The door had 14 behind. God's proof in her they would find. 13 of them had known him from this queen. Fatima Zahra alayhi salam in the Quran. First of all, you know, what is the Quran? So the, for the viewers that don't understand what the Quran is or the um, impact or the significance of the Quran, puts very, very simply the divine word of guidance and spirituality explaining man's purpose and objective here on earth. The relationship we must have with the Quran. Okay? So essentially, as we mentioned, it's the divine word of God sent to us in a book in order for us to live our lives in a meaningful, peaceful way. Okay? In this book, there are many, many different aspects that can tell us about how to live our life, be it from a law aspect, regulations, be it from a spiritual aspect, there are supplications, be it from a story aspect, to gain inspiration, there are stories in there. Yeah? And also to explain the significance and the importance of our relationship with the Qur'an. Of course, the relationship that, that, uh, that we should have with the Qur'an all boils down to the hadith of the Prophet when he says, I leave behind you two weighty things. The Ahlul Bayt and the Qur'an. They will not separate until we meet in the land of, in the pool of Kawthar. So the, the same way we have a very tight relationship with the Ahlul Bayt be it Fatim Zahra, be it the Prophet Muhammad, be it Imam Ali alayhi salam, we should also have a simultaneous love and passion for the Qur'an. And let's delve into Fatim Zahra's life through the Qur'an. Of course, the first and most relevant uh, chapter in the Qur'an that speaks about Fatim Zahra um, is the surah or the chapter of Kawthar. On the date of her birth in Mecca, the Almighty revealed Surah Al Kawthar. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Inna a'atayna kal Kawthar. Fasalli li Rabbika wanhar. Inna shani'aka huwa al Abtar. Of course, as we know during the time and the historical facts, the Prophet, um, some people of Mecca, would mock the Prophet, say that he was Abtar, a man who could not have children because he had no son. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a daughter and a queen whose legacy is remembered throughout the whole of the Islamic history. A queen who would give the Prophet 12 princes who would inherit his knowledge and power and surely the enemy of the Prophet is the one who will be without offspring. And this is the last verse. And that's where the enemies that spoke about the Prophet or mocked the Prophet for not having a son Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala switched it round for the enemies and that person who mocked the prophets, that person became a person who could not have a son. 
And that's the first verse or the first chapter in the Quran which speaks about Fatima Zahra. There is another one. Um, the second is the ayah, the, the verse that refers to Sayyidah Fatima Zahra is the famous ayah of Tathir. Okay, and this is found in, uh, in chapter 33, verse 33. Allah intends only to remove, remove you from the impurity of sin, O people of the Prophet's household, and to purify you with extensive purification. Why is this so significant? A number of different things. Okay. First and foremost, Hadith al-Kisa, which is also narrated by Fatima Zahra, further supports this ayah which is used to explain the infallibility of the five ma'sumin. The Prophet Muhammad, Imam Ali salam, Sayyidah Fatim Zahra, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. Peace be upon them all. Now, the reason why this is very important is because it also delves into the issue or the topic of infallibility. Now, infallibility, not to delve too, too deep into it, but the reason why infallibility is important is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His divine mercy, in His absolute beauty, right? He is impeccable and therefore He sends down a message. Any message coming down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is impeccable. Okay, there are no wrong aspects to this message. Therefore, the person or the vehicle that explains this message to the people has to also be impeccable or infallible. Why? Because if there were any sense of doubt with the person or the vehicle that is spreading this message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this can link back to doubt to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yep. It's very, very simple in essence. Of course, delving into it, it's much more of a complicated issue. The infallibility of Prophet Muhammad, Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein and Fatim Zahra is important because they spread the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for them to spread the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they must be infallible because people must trust them with this message. If they were seen to be people of ill repute or people that may make mistakes, then the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is then subject to ill repute or mistake or doubt. The message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet is La ilaha in Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. And the 14 and the 12 Imams after are the vice adherents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, this is the reason why the, uh, the infallibility aspect is important. Another verse in the Quran, which is mentioned, that speaks about Fatim Zahra alayhi salam, is the impact of Mubahala or Eid al Mubahala, as we say. Because in Chapter of Al-Imran, verse number 61, it says, Then whoever argues with you about it after this knowledge has come to you, say, Come, let us call our sons and your sons, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves. Then supplicate earnestly together and invoke the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the liars among us. Who was present in Eid al-Mubahala? Or the, the impact? See, the, the whole... The whole uh, story of Mubahala or the impact of Mubahala is that two people or two clans or two groups of people came together. This one believed in a message and this one believed in a message. And so they came together and said, we will invoke or supplicate earnestly and invoke the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon the liars. And so the Christians of Najran came forward with their people and the Prophet came forward with his people. Who did he come with? As we know, he came with himself. And when it says, let us call our sons, his sons were Hassan and Hussein. Let us call our women. Women was Fatima Zahra, although he had a choice of which women to take, but he took Fatima Zahra. Ourselves and yourselves. When, he, when it mentions ourselves, he says, he brought Imam Ali alayhi salam. And those are the five people that he brought alongside with him. When they came to the place where they were to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath upon the liars, the Christians of Najran noticed the luminous light coming from the faces of these infallibles. And so they retracted and said, if there are this, if there, 
they said that there is so much nur, so much light coming from the face or the faces of these people that if they told this mountain to move or if they told this mountain to be crushed, it will do so. Yep. And that's the significant importance of Fatim Zahra who was accompanying the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in this event of Mubahala, also mentioned in the Quran. So three, Surah Al-Kawthar, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the birth of Fatim Zahra, the verse of purity, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks to purify Fatim Zahra from any sins and thus making her infallible. And then the impact of her stature within the family of the Prophet is mentioned in Al Imran. But of course, her father yearns to resurrect once for every tear she's shed. And other Muhammad's yearn earlier birth for blood she's bled. They gather 13. But the first and the last are all Muhammad. She'd wither and they'd be there for her, wailing on her deathbed. How much, how much she had mourned Muhammad's last breath. How many Muhammads have mourned her death. From crying, they're almost blind. God's proof in her they would find. Thirteen of them had known him from this queen. In lights dim, in Fatima's house of sorrow I see hidden. al kavo making a house of sorrow out of his prison. Beside him, he sees his mother wailing from a rib broken. I fathom that she also sees him. That's why she's heartbroken. Maybe she had built the house of sorrow to mourn the prison that burnt his shadow. Her shadow to his, she'd bind God's proof. In her they would find 13 of them had known him from his queen. How many of the 13 wished they were with her on that day? As Ali watching his house burn would also watch his world sway tragedy from that day of days cannot be taken away but he'd see her head slapped and recall he'd be struck when he'd pray he'd yearn that fatal strike upon his head one thousand times but not her head instead two tragedies were aligned god's proof in her they would find 13 of them had known him from this queen